Navigating how to construct the right offer can be a daunting task in this market, but I'm gonna show you a few important factors to consider when making a competitive offer that will secure you the house of your dreams. Welcome back everyone. I am doing a different exercise this time around. I have my analysis glasses this time, and we're gonna be doing a deep dive in terms of how to set the right expectations when making an offer in this competitive environment. Many people might get discouraged about finding a list price and saying, hey, look, it sold over $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 over what it got listed at. However, that's not the metric that you should be using because the list price is actually an artificial number. An agent like myself would list it for whatever we want. We can list a house for $900,000 if we want, but it doesn't mean that it will get to whatever it doesn't make a difference, quite frankly, of what level it will get to. However, it will make a difference because there will be a ton of people that will enter in the house. So even though a house on the market may have 20 plus offers, a majority of those offers are uneducated offers. So if you are one of those people that are making these uneducated offers, it's a combination of things that can happen. It's either one, find the right agent like myself that is very data driven. And we're going to take a look at exactly how do we find the value of making a competitive offer in this exercise and or it's you know you may have to just rest and look at a different time because the market that we're in is not about me or individuals finding buyers in this marketplace is finding the right educated buyers and those that are willing to learn and understand the market is the key component at this time to give you an idea whenever this is being recorded which i believe is probably early march uh I have already helped 12 families buy a home in the Bay Area. And as you all know, if you have been looking or any of your friends has been browsing, it's been one of the busiest markets that there has been in a very long time. It doesn't mean we're, doesn't mean we're going gun ho and then my, all my clients are saying, hey, look, let's make it rain and let's put in tons of money and let's get it done. But they are all very educated and they are educated because everything that I do is a very data-driven approach. So you will see for yourself what that means. And hopefully you will either use it for yourself or if you're not having success, reach out to me. Let's begin the conversation so that you get the right framework. Because at the end of the day today, it's all about strategy. The strategy of making a compelling offer at the same time, weighing the risks, including like disclosures and any sort of concerns to factor in on the price. We're going to take an example here. We're going to take a look at 38905 Bluebell. This is a very active one, but I'll, I will use it as a live exercise to give you my thoughts as to what this will sell for. And we will find out in about a month time frame what it actually sells for. So it's all a very good exercise that we will do together. So looking at this property, let's take a look at the condition. The very first step that I always do is we look at the condition of the home. What does this home look like? How is it? As you can see through pictures, you can see the home itself looks like it was freshly remodeled. Nothing too crazy, good or bad. They have a separate space for their great room. Just skimming through these pictures, you can see for yourself, updated kitchen. Let's check out the bathrooms. Bathrooms look like they have been updated as well. And overall, let's say it's a very good looking house. So the reason why we do this exercise is because we also certainly factor in the value of remodeling work if it needs to be done or not. Everything can be replaced. Everything can be fixed. It just requires patience, time, and, and money. But it all should be accounted in as we determine the fair value of this house. So what do we do? The, the thing that needs to happen every time before we make offers is an analysis of what has sold in the last, especially in this hot market, even the last two months is good enough data so you can see where things have been in the past. So what I always do, because I have access to the MLS, is I simply just do an export of all homes that have sold that are similar uh, size in terms of square, uh, in terms of bed and bath configuration and similar square feet, so that we can look at it together on a Google Sheet. That makes it a whole lot easier to understand. You can see I have it pulled up. These are all three bedroom plus two bath. It could be two bath or two and a half bath that has sold in the last three months of when I pull this. You can see we have our subject property here. We have Bluebell Drive. 
And you have other ones that I like to highlight because I feel like these are the most comparable ones that other people will look into. So you have this property here, 37784 Birch Street, three bed, two bath, 1295 square feet. This sold for $1.11 million. And it's the most recent comp, which sold in February. You have something that are big, that's bigger, 1522 square feet, 6261 Mark, Marguerite Drive. This was remodeled a while ago, sold in January, late January. And you have Miss Flower, 42, 1522 square feet, so, so on end of January as well. So the key about this exercise is trying to determine what is a fair price per square feet when we look at things that have sold for in the past. As you can see, this currently listed is at 705 per square feet, which if you compare it to these other ones is ridiculously low. So don't worry about the list price because it doesn't mean anything. The appraiser does not look at this list price either. So if I did a fair analysis of this, I think that this could appraise or this can go, This, if you look in the past, it will go for, as you can see these numbers. If you want to take the low end, 1295 square feet house, this sold for 857 per square feet. As you get to a bigger and bigger home, the price per square foot drops. So I think you'd be very aggressive if you look at the past to have it anywhere close to this number. However, I think you're being too conservative if you look at any of these numbers, right? If you look at this one, this sold at 802 per square feet, and this was uh, 1522, so it's bigger than this one. So my guess is something kind of in the middle. So I put a range, as let's say 800 per square feet. So you can see if it's 800 per square feet times a 1490, it will end up to be about 1.19 million. So this is a number and a value. If all things are equal, as in the market was flat, what the price of this should go for. However, that we are not in a flat market and there are other variables as well, but this gives you an idea of the analysis side of things. There are several things that are not taken into consideration here. We have not looked at disclosures yet, which are usually, there can be negative things that you wanna note and potentially deduct from your price. But we also did not account for where the market is and where it's going. Because remember, this is what has sold in the past. If you think about these homes, these are homes that have sold, actually got an offer accepted at the end of December. And by the time we're making this offer, it's over two months from there. And you may be asking, well, Spencer, two months is not a long time. Like what number should we put in? It's all about being data driven. Take a look for yourself. What has home prices done in the last two months? This is a single family report for Newark. In this case, it's the same city that we're looking at. You may say, hey, look, what are the prices? A medium sales price in January 2021 was 1.11 million. If you compare it to now in, in March, it is at 1.21 million. What is that from a percentage basis? About an 8 to 9% increase in the last two months. So you may be thinking, wow, that's really high. And it potentially is. So when I look at this math, it means I would not be surprised if it sold for 1.29, because let's say that's 9% higher than that math. However, you do have at least one example here that sold not long ago. So maybe it's only a 5% increase. So you should have a number in your mind as to how you came up with a specific price. Because the reason for this is that a good agent like myself, even if we did not win this home, I will find out what it actually went for after the fact. And then you can then calibrate your understanding of the market based off of that information. So for example, if this sells at 129, but you made an offer at 12, you know, like it could, it, this was very predictable as to what it would have been. It doesn't mean that you, uh, it doesn't mean that you're overbidding. It's just actually just relative to the market. Now, if this home sold for one four, then that's a very big concern. And in that case, that may be an outlier because that's a way bigger increase than it should have been, as you can see, because you are now a data-driven buyer. So those are the critical components when it comes to making prices. However, in this market, as you can see, of the increase in prices, these are pretty quick increases. And so there is risks when it comes to appraising. And it's all about assessing and understanding the level of risk for you to factor in. 
most people today are putting, let's say 20%. If you're putting 20%, you may have to be able to cover additional down payment if it doesn't appraise for that value. So in this example, my guess is that it would appraise for around 119 because this is what clearly what other evidence there has been in the past. Now, uh, if you made an offer of what is needed to win it, it could be 125. So you see there's a potential delta. Now, I will do everything that I can to uh, share with the appraiser of like, this is the market we're in. You can see from the data where prices have gone to get it to appraise for that. So there is a good chance that it still appraises for what you bought it for, but there is also a very fair risk that it doesn't appraise for that. And so you need to be able to have the, the gap in terms of this additional amount potentially in case it doesn't appraise. But I hope this was a helpful exercise because it does allow you to understand that there are levels of this you know, mentality, right? You have the list price, you have what others have sold for in the past, and you have what it takes to win in this market. But as you can see, if you had a data-driven approach, it all becomes very, uh, you can start understanding why things are what they are. Don't just blow this up and think, hey, look, the market's on fire. I, I'm not, you know, I don't know what to do. It's all random numbers we're throwing out. That's not the case, at least not worth working with me. And so all of my clients have this as a huge competitive advantage because you will know for yourself, one, if you're overpaying, two, having a realistic expectation of the market, and three, you're just going to be much more informed. This is one of the variables that we use. So it's not the only variable that we use, right? We still look at disclosures, given my background and my knowledge of a lot of the renovation costs that happen in this market. I certainly can give you general estimates of what to expect, but it also does not factor in competition. So that is certainly another uh, thing to consider too. But all those variables together will be compiled into one number. And then you, at the end of the day, you as a client are the one that, you know, puts out whatever number you are comfortable with, but whatever comes back, you will at least know and understand that if you don't win this time, you'll learn the next time. So it's all about learning. It's all about getting better. So I hope this was helpful. This is a very deep dive, much different than most of my other videos, but you know, I just feel a lot of people are just not understanding the market. People need to have realistic expectations of the market. And this is the clear way to do so. And all of my clients are super thrilled about it of the 12 that I helped this year, of the 47 that I helped in the last 14 months, every single person does the same exercise for every home that we make an offer on. And with that, they learn and understand every time and they eventually find their dream home pretty quickly soon after. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to click on the calendar link below. Let's set up a time to talk. If you're not having a good experience with your agent for whatever reason, it happens. Um, not everyone has this data-driven approach, as you can see, but this happens for every offer that we make, whether you're in the, you're in the stages of making offers or you're in the very early stages of just understanding the market. Love to connect and help you every step of the way. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you at the next one, Engineering a Better Life, today.